Muslim does namaz five times a day, wherever he is, a Christian, whatever may be the reason, takes the Sunday off and goes and sits in the church. We, who claim to be Hindu of this land, do nothing and yet talk about Dharmic revival. The suffix ism is added to denote taking a particular side or even depicting an imitation of something. The suffix in Hinduism, it could be used to describe philosophies, theories, social and artistic movements and behaviors of the Hindus. Do these descriptions fit the cultural fabric and view of the entire width and breadth of this land of Bharat? Definitely not. Hinduism rises above such philosophies. It is a way of life. A culture. An idea of India, Bharat Varsha, the land from the Himalayas to the oceans, going back to the Rig Veda, which is about 1500 BC, a good uh, 3000 years or more, and many, many other examples. The Harvard scholar Diana Eck writes of the sacred geography of India, knit together, she says, by countless tracts of pilgrimage. It has survived many centuries of onslaughts, invasions, and conversions. Despite this, why do I think Hindu culture may die? This is my personal observation in the last three decades of traveling and knowing about other indigenous cultures and uh, living my own. Branding by the West. It has been an age old trend that the West has been constantly addressing people of indigenous cultures as uncivilized and savages. Was it true they were barbarians? We've been here for a very, very long time, at least 23,000 years as a recent footprint, a fossilized footprint in New Mexico has, has shown, debunking the primitive Indian myth, uh, which has always been just a part of legitimizing the settler state. Because if settlers could prove that we were primitive, that we were savage, then it didn't really matter that they annihilated us. European settlers killed over 56 million indigenous people over a period of 100 years. keeping. The men and women separate during their primary productive ages, slave trade and so on, basically to change the demographic, reduce their numbers and uh, eventually annihilate them. Correcting that historical record and saying, no, this was a highly cultivated land and we were highly cultivated people, highly sophisticated, arguably much more sophisticated than our counterparts. Until I came to the US, um, my idea of Native Americans was that uh, they were just primitive, they were nomadic, they were traveling from one place to another, hunter-gatherers. Coming to this Vupatki site, I see this is a multi-story inhabitant. People were staying here in a group, as a community. I do know that they created a highly complex social political system. So even the pottery, the kind of fabric, the basket material that they have taken from here, they have really been an advanced culture. This is at 950 to 1100. And today, the younger generation, they don't even read about it in their history books. Lots of um, Native American history here, it's actually off the chart. The geology is off the chart, the Native American history is off the chart, the archaeology is off the chart. As a matter of fact, uh, when I was going to school, they didn't talk about Native Americans at all. Briefly touched on the Trail of Tears. So now they're talking about um, the natives that were forcibly marched out of Arizona. Same here in India. About 4.5 million people died in the Bengal famine which was purposely created to deprive people of food and kill them. Grain was sent off from Bengal. Prices became unaffordable. People started dying. The British officials, this is the 1940s after all, wrote to the Prime Minister, Mr. Churchill, saying, your decisions are causing people to die. Churchill's response was, I hate Indians. They're a beastly people with a beastly religion. It's all their fault anyway for breeding like rabbits. Now, these are exact quotes, by the way, word for word. Today we come to know of uh, many such incidents um, in our history which we had not read in our textbooks. So we are not completely informed about our own stories. This ancient trend has now been replaced with uh, activisms, geopolitics, resolutions and laws, press and social media narratives which put down indigenous cultures, especially Bharat. And the intellectuals who have been convent educated 
fall for this narrative. Movies establish a stereotype. Movies, both Hollywood and Indian movies, have been stereotyping indigenous people. Actor Johnny Depp plays the role of Tonto, a Native American character who some say reinforces negative stereotypes of indigenous people in the United States. There's been a huge online backlash with many calling Tonto just another example of Hollywood's long history of misrepresenting minorities. In the last few decades, the stereotyping is always Hindu culture and rituals and that unconsciously makes us feel ashamed of being identified with it. I have myself gone through that mind state during my schooling days. I remember as I step out of my home to school, I would consciously wipe the ash from my forehead for fear of ridicule in my convent school. Last few decades, films have constantly put down Hindu rituals, customs and traditions to a large extent. Pakistani, this is a Rudraksh Mala, a Hindu rosary. The last thing you find on a Pakistani Muslim is not right or not. I don't get it. It's a false flag operation. Indian nationalists hoping to frame Pakistan in a mushroom cloud. Once we became numb to that, they started making fun of the gods and we sat through and laughed at those as well. Reservations and government control. An indigenous tribe or clan is, uh, is rounded off in the name of a reservation. The original natives of the land live under the law and enforcement of a foreign government or institution. Matter of historical record that the ancestors of the upper Mattapanai inhabited this land between Herring Creek and the river for centuries. And yet, up to this point, it's proven impossible for the tribe to achieve federal recognition. The Shinnecock was the last tribe to achieve federal recognition in 2010, after decades of litigation. It's humiliating, it's degrading, it tears you apart we predated even the records here in this country. A cultural identity is fenced off and the actions further indicate an intent to annihilate or destroy that culture. We are of this land, uh, this is our home, and as our elders say, we've been here since time immemorial. In Indonesia, an Islamic nation today, Bali is a Hindu island. Their practices and rituals are greatly directed by the government. They let them practice it the way the government decides and without letting them know about their past history of how the whole nation was a Hindu country at some point. The narratives are important to hold the whole population in a certain mindset. I see the same parallels in place where it comes to the government controlling and administering Hindu temples in India. What the British actually did was to divide it because what they did was to essentially create the seeds of what became the destruction of this 3,000 year old idea of India. But the British were the first to apply it in India and they did it very systematically. Divide and rule became their ruling credo and they decided that the basis of divide and rule must be religious and there must be a conscious, deliberate attempt made to foment separate religious consciousness amongst the communities of India to prevent a united opposition to them. And these days they have even started getting into enforcing laws to curb the way Hindu festivals and rituals are done too. This is over temple decorations that uh, have now become a huge issue. This controversy has erupted after police asked temple authorities to use multicolor decorations for temple festival instead of using the complete saffron color decorations. It appears to be a political attempt to destroy rituals customs of Hindus. There are hundreds of archaeological sites in India which have not been excavated for decades because of political reasons and vested interests. There was a disconnect between what we had learned in school with my parents, grandparents, when I went there and talked about, oh, this, I learned this, but then there will be a contradiction from my grand, especially from my grandparents. Like, what do my nana ji know, you know, or what do my dada ji know? Uh, in school, whatever I learned is the, you know, that should be it. When I came to the graduate student, I started learning about some of those things, and I was like, no. Pretty much everything, especially about history, India's history, was basically not true. And that's how I started uh, investigating on my own what the real history is, what the real culture is. If we don't know our true history, there won't be pride in us, nor the impulse to live the culture. Governments, both left and the right, have played a major role in distorting history and narratives to suit their agenda. Language. A strong identity of a person is their language. 
one's mother tongue has all the necessary ingredients to nourish the individual of cultural social and uh, spiritual values which have been passed down for hundreds of generations one of the major actions by conquerors and invaders was to remove the native language by imposition of their language the us government did a pretty good job of obliterating our library of knowledge through the prohibition of our languages in the boarding schools we don't have any elders to interview anymore because either they're all dead from disease epidemics or massacre or the ones who are still alive went through the boarding school process and don't remember they don't remember how we used to do these things i am speaking in english so the people world over can understand it has its advantages but it has come at the cost of me losing in touch with my own mother tongue tamil having grown up studying in a in an english convent school had lost touch with all the rich spiritual and cultural texts written in tamil by ancient siddhars and authors of the past that is sufficient to eliminate the roots one has with their cultural identity these are the ruins of an old native american boarding school on the rosebud reservation in south dakota until the 1970s more than 350 such schools were set up with the explicit goal of eradicating native american culture erase and replace erase language replace with english erase spirituality religion replace with christianity by 1900 more than half of all native children lived in the strictly regimented institutions this is a major flaw and fall in people moving away from their own native languages today we talk about sanatana dharma as a culture a way of life which has existed and evolved over millennia and how reviving it is important and this revival how is it happening the government and few institutions are reclaiming and renovating a few ancient temples although it is important to be doing that a major if not equal effort should go into reviving the cultural aspects too what is the use of grand ancient buildings if the people who live around it don't have a clue of why these temples were built or how to make use of these powerful energy kshetras they would just become museums of the future where people may walk around not knowing what these mean it is easy to play victim and point at the invaders or uh, other religions for where we stand today as a generation of hindus one simple thing i ask people a muslim does namaz five times a day wherever he is and on fridays goes to his mosque a christian whatever may be the reason takes the sunday off and goes and sits in the church we who claim to be hindu of this land do nothing and yet talk about dharmic revival this is not in competition unless you follow a certain set of practice or ritual japa or tapa or as simple as lighting a lamp every day in your life you are just a talker this is good for nothing this is very crucial to be understood people tell me that i am unnecessarily alarmed about the hindu dharmic culture going extinct their logic is how the whole of bharat was under islamic rule for over 300 years and at Hinduism sprung back and how the British tried to convert and plunder us for 100 plus years and yet we still survived as Hindus but the big difference is that when the Mughals looted and demolished temples and when British enforced laws each household had their own dharmic practices going on they had their language their stories their culture rituals and practices going on today we have none of that except the once a year festivals of Navratri and Ganesh Chaturthi and we are satisfied with that unless and until we make efforts to start allocating a few minutes of the day in whatever ritual or practice has been part of your ancestry this hindu culture will go extinct one needs to learn and practice the methods taught by the ancient siddhas rishis and munis so as to equip oneself to understand and experience the energies embodied in the grand temples and these practices had to be a part of daily routine again i repeat this is not in competition and should not be done in competition to other religions this is to benefit and grow from a culture which has nurtured a way of life which is all inclusive inclusive of different beliefs races and customs this is for the individual's benefit and growth and in turn the whole of humanity as a small step we have been doing the know your culture video series where we talk about the science behind our cultural practices and how to practice and benefit from it 
do watch and share it with others and do your own bit and your bit will be to practice it in your day to day life without the individual transformation sanatana dharma is not going to stay alive namaskar